Thank you for listening to our daily devotional. The devotional today is from our Bible reading in Genesis 1 through 5. Begin with God. Well, this is the beginning of our devotional series on reading the Bible through, reading about 25 minutes. I wish I could say it just took 25 minutes, but my wife and I sat down and studied these uh, passages, read through them, and discussed quite a bit of things, so many things in God's Word that sometimes you just don't notice. But there are some things that uh, I just wanted to bring forth as I looked at it and uh, looked at Genesis 1 through 5, but I think the main thing is, as you begin in Genesis 1, you ought to underline, in the beginning, God. You know, you think about the world and the situation that came about as you get to Genesis 6, and you find on through chapter 1 until chapter 6, there is that up and down of people deciding what they're going to do with God. Well, in Genesis 1, if we begin with God and stay with God, think of what an amazing place this would be and the questions that would be answered, the hope that would be instilled. You know, for example, if we begin with God and stay with God, think about the estimation of self that we have. In Genesis 1, verse 26 and 28, we find God made man in his own image. Oh, he created all of the other animals in this world. We're not animals. We're different. We're created in the very image of God. And if we give in to the idea of evolution, one of the, you know, I'm not supposed to say it, but the only thing I can say, one of the stupidest ideas that ever comes forth. But if you give in to evolution, you and I are no different than a cockroach that you step on. Just a little further in the chain and a little different organization. But I'm not that. I'm made in the image of God. So I begin with God, and whenever I have that estimation of self, I don't act like an animal. Our world today is filled with people that act like animals. But I'm different. You're different. And so you begin with God, and you have a proper estimation of self. And then secondly, in chapter 2, in verse 24, God had created Adam and Eve. And woman was bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. Male and female. Matthew 19 and verse 6 and following, the Lord refers to this account, so we know it's accurate. Either that or Jesus was mixed up. I'm not going there. But there you find that he created them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Well, today, whenever people marry, there's not a cleaving. There's not that union. It's kind of a temporary thing, isn't it? Divorce for any cause. Jesus in Matthew 19 again pointed out the seriousness of that union. But also you find the world today can't even figure out male and female, male and male, woman and woman, maybe some man and an animal. You look and you find that the world puts God out in the home, goes terribly wrong. And then in chapter 3 in verse 1 through 6, there Eve was tempted. The serpent came and said, eat this. She said, God has said in the day that you eat of, you'll die. The serpent said, you shall not die. God just knows you'll know like him. You'll be like him. Well, Eve, if she would have stayed with God, then the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life that she gave into wouldn't have been able to join with the subtlety, the deceitfulness of the devil, and bring her into sin. She would have, if she had stayed with God, and people today, if we stayed with God, we'd be able to avoid temptation because 1 John 2, verse 15 and 16, we're not to love the things of the world, neither the things uh, the, the world nor the things that are of the world. For the lust of flesh, the lust of the eyes, pride of life, these things aren't of God. They're not of the Father. And so if we begin and stay with God, temptation is overcome. I give in to temptation whenever I push God out of the picture, just like Eve did. And think about in chapter 3 and verse 6, if we begin with God and stay with God, think of the interaction between Eve and Adam. Eve gave to her husband. He ate it. Adam should have been a helpmeet to her. That's how God created us. 
He looked and he said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make a help meet for him. That suitable corresponding part. We need each other. And yet they failed each other. If God had been foremost in their mind, Eve, number one, wouldn't have given it to Adam. Number two, Adam wouldn't have taken it. He would have looked at her in love and concern for her as somebody made in the image of God and said, what are you doing? How can you do that? Now, Galatians 6 and verse 1, you restore such a one, you see taken in a fault, you restore him in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest also be tempted. We're following Christ, he says in the next verse. We're fulfilling those things that, that God has given to us. Putting God first will help us, chapter 3 and verse 6, to be a proper help meet to one another within the home and actually within all of our life. And then in chapter 4 and verse 3 through 5, think of what would have happened if Cain and Abel both had put God first, had begun with and stayed with God. They both knew God. We find in Hebrews 11th chapter and verse 4 that the sacrifice that Abel offered was offered by faith. Cain obviously knew what he should have done, but he didn't do it. Sometimes people fail. You know, John, the fourth chapter, verse 23 and 24, Jesus points out that God is spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. If we don't have that proper concept of God, worship falters and fails. If you don't believe that, look around at the religious world. But if we begin with God, then worship makes sense. And it's something we follow that we do to God, not to self, not out of convenience. And then in chapter 4 and verse 7, there, whenever God confronted Cain, Cain was wroth because God had had respect unto Abel and his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he didn't. And God told him, said, it's your fault, Cain. You had the choice. If you do well, then what's going to happen? But if you do evil, sin lieth at the door. He was telling Cain, just like he tells us, you can't blame anybody. James says we can't say that God tempts us. God tempteth no man. But it's whenever we allow our own lust to conceive that sin comes forth. God made us free moral creatures. We have the ability to put him first and to choose right instead of wrong. So begin with God. Begin with God and think of all of the life that is there and what we become. Well, what happens if we stay with God? Over in chapter 5 and verse 24, Enoch. Enoch walked with God. God took him. I remember my father-in-law all through the time that I knew him. He'd say, I want to be like Enoch. He wanted to walk with God. You know, every one of us has that ability. If we begin with God, you read Genesis 1 through 5, and that lesson stands out. Begin with God. If you don't, sadly, the lessons show forth then and in our society today. But I pray not in our life. Be an Enoch. Walk with God. Thank you for listening. Look forward to tomorrow talking about a few things out of Genesis 6 through 10. Thank you again for listening to this devotional. We remind you, if you'd like to have a copy of the daily Bible reading that we're going through, just look to the link below and you can click that and download one or contact us and we'll help you with that or any other matter that you'd like to contact us about. We'll do what we can. Thank you very much.